Here's a little dog. Uh, yes. Hi, guys. It is a cool, gray, gloomy day. We're in the collapse of everything. It's bugs in a jar farm. We have stumbled into Monday. It is September 11th, 2023. September 11th. Don't get me going. Don't get me going. Uh, I'm glad to see September 11th barely being mentioned in the mainstream media today. Uh, so anyway, I'm sitting here with my sick little dog. My little dog uh, has a stomach virus. You might hear some growling. It's coming from his belly, not from his throat. So while I sit here and uh, nurse my ailing little dog, yes, I'm going to give him his own chair. We're going to, uh, one more time, make a wild guess. We're going to head over to medium.com and hear from uh, a brand new, well, he's been on Medium since July, I apparently, and has 56 subscribers. We're going to get the, this fellow in a minute. But uh, we're going to be talking about the Great Acceleration and the Anthropocene in today's Chronicle of the Collapse. But before we get into the full essay, I just want to share this comment from uh, a fairly new subscriber, Tree Frog, who I have mentioned before because Tree Frog this comment is basically shorthand for the essay we're getting ready to read. Take it away, tree frog, and talk about the Anthropocene and the Great Acceleration. <coughs> <coughs> Speaking as an objective alien observer might, the emergence of Homo sapiens is demonstrably and empirically the very worst thing that ever happened to the planet Earth. If you simply take a moment and imagine the biological evolution of the Earth without human presence, you come to the startling realization that the Earth at this very moment would be a pristine wonderland of biodiversity that is bubbling over with potential. Instead, we Homo sapiens have created a world that is teeming with death and destruction, ecological desecration, unbelievable social injustice, and megatons of bullshit, chicanery, and self-aggrandizing philosophies. Man <coughs> may now very well be the measure of all things, but not in a good way. <clears throat> Thank you, Tree Frog. By summing up this essay by this fellow that I am who now has 59 followers since I joined this uh, fellow's small tribe. His name is Peter Borg, B-O-R-G. I have no idea who Peter is. He doesn't really say anything, but I can tell you this. Peter Borg <clears throat> is not a clueless moron, although, of course, he drinks a little bit of hopium at the very end. And uh, the title of his excellent essay, which I will put the link to <clears throat> today, is called Epical Acceleration, How the Anthropocene Has Reduced Planetary Changes from Geological Time Frames to Within a Single Human 
lifetime. <clears throat> Take it away. Peter Borg. There was a time when life moved slowly, fitting perfectly into the rhythm of the earth. People would awaken with the sun, plant their crops to the song of the seasons, and gather their yield when the time was right. For generations they danced to the same rhythm. People were farmers. Their offspring became farmers, and the tradition continued generation after generation. The Holocene was our stage, and we were mere extras in the grand play that unfolded on the time scales of gods. Fast forward 10,000 years, <clears throat> and we have elevated ourselves to the roles of main actors in this grand production. We no longer merely fit our role. Instead, we have reshaped the stage to suit our diva-like demands. The Holocene has been replaced by the Anthropocene, and in this new play, things move at a much faster pace. They move so swiftly that generations no longer practice the same professions. Not only do entire professions change from one generation to the next, but humans also switch from one profession to the next within a single lifetime. Technology advances so rapidly that the world is unrecognizable from birth to old age. Even the planetary conditions which would typically take millions of years to shift, now dance to our rhythm. <clears throat> Although the concept of the Anthropocene is not officially recognized just yet, the Anthropocene Working Group took a significant step in 2016 with a formal proposal for a golden spike, intending to establish an official definition for the Anthropocene epoch within the geological time scale. <clears throat> this time frame aligns with the emergence of the Great Acceleration a post-World War II period characterized by a rapid escalation in socioeconomic and earth system trends. In its analysis of the Great Ex Acceleration, the International Geosphere-Biosphere Program <coughs> examined data spanning from 1750 to 2010 and categorized it into two main groups, each compromising 12 subcategories. These divisions offer insight into the relationship between socioeconomic trends and their impact on the Earth's systems and, of course, uh, what you're seeing in these graphs are the infamous hockey stick looking like this, you know, begging the question when this is going to look like this. So uh, I guess we have 24 hockey sticks divided into two main groups of hockey sticks. <clears throat> I'm going to put the link on here, and you can really, uh, if you're one of these graph people, which I am not, by the way, you can study these graphs. The graphs above examine the rate of change of socioeconomic factors such as population, real GDP, 
water use and transportation as well as earth-related factors like carbon dioxide, methane, stratospheric ozone, surface temperatures, and ocean acidification. The link between human activity and climate change is now well established and has been extensively reviewed by trusted research bodies such as the IPCC. Well, again, uh, you're going to get a little bit of debate about is the IPCC a trusted research body? Of course, the, you know, the climate change denying Trump crowd would say they are alarmist while anybody with a brain uh, would point out how the IPCC, the last thing they are, is alarmist and that they're way too conservative. This is what I don't trust about the IPCC. Anyway, <clears throat> we now understand that the accelerating changes in Earth's environment can be exacerbated by feedback loops that are triggered when critical tipping points are reached. These environmental snowballing effects include phenomena such as the release of methane from thawing permafrost, which further increases global temperatures, <clears throat> and the reduction in albedo from melting ice leading to increased energy absorption and further melting. Uh, then he quotes from uh, this a report uh, from the International Geosphere Biosphere Program analyzing the great acceleration <clears throat> from the report quote a single type one single type of human driven change triggers a large number of responses in the earth system which themselves cascade through the system often merging with patterns of natural variability. The responses seldom follow linear change, but more often interact with each other, sometimes damping the effects of the original human forcing and at other times amplifying them." Close quote. Uh, back to Peter. Furthermore, the swift advancement of new technology has established a human feedback loop in which new technologies facilitate an even faster development of subsequent technologies. This loop has contributed to an exponential surge in the pace of change as innovations build upon one another in shorter time frames. Cultural narratives and societal beliefs also play a significant role here. Narratives centered around progress, infinite growth, and the pursuit of happiness have prioritized short-term gains and individual incentives, a phenomenon refer referred to as temporal discounting, where humans tend to prioritize immediate rewards over long-term consequences. This psychological trait can drive behaviors that favor short-term gains even when they lead to long-term negative outcomes such as 
over-exploitation of resources or environmental degradation. <clears throat> Humanity is also susceptible to optimism bias, mm. often perceiving risks as being lower than they actually are, tending to be overly optimistic about the future. I think it's safe to say that most people listening to a channel called Collapse Chronicles do not suffer from optimism bias. Optimism bias can lead to underestimating the potential negative consequences of rapid changes. How many times have you found yourself thinking that you could make that shot? That you could throw that crumpled up paper bag into a waste bin six feet away only for you to end up red-faced in the bag on the floor? Well, that is the story of humanity. And uh, so then in the middle of this essay, he takes this long detour and uh, using the race to colonize the moon as an example of what he's talking about. It's an interesting read, but uh, it detracts from the main theme. So you can go on, on here and read about the race to the moon in the middle of this excellent essay. But I'm going to pick back up once we get back to our own planet, <clears throat> back to Peter. The journey from the traditional farmer's fields to the globalized, technology-driven present has been swift, transforming professions, landscapes, and even the fundamental workings of our environment. Yet, as we race forward, the shadow of unintended consequences looms large. The urgency of our technological advancement must be balanced by an equal urgency for reflection and consideration. The very tools that enable our progress can also amplify its negative impacts. <clears throat> the Great Acceleration stands as a stark reminder of the interconnectedness between our socio-economic choices and the Earth's intricate systems. The evidence of climate change borne out in data and endorsed by expert assessments underscores the need to approach progress with caution. <clears throat> In a world where information and innovation ripple across borders in an instant, the temptation to prioritize short-term gains often overshadows the wisdom of long-term thinking. <clears throat> Narratives of boundless growth and perpetual advancement have shaped our outlook, encouraging us to discount the consequences of our actions. The story of humanity's impact on Earth is still being written, and the ending is far from certain. Well, maybe for you, Peter, uh, the, the ending is completely certain uh, to me, but this is your rant, not mine. Let it be a story not only of rapid progress, but also of wise forethought, foresight, a story that honors the rhythms of nature and the legacy we leave for generations 
yet to come, we need, we need to slow down and realize that human existence and planetary life operate on a time scale wholly different from that of a human lifetime. Decisions must be made with this in mind, lest we inadvertently reduce the planetary time scales to that of a human lifetime. Thank you. Amen. Uh, Brother Peter, uh, I guess he is a writer for an outfit called The New Climate. And he's, this is his second essay. So I guess we have nine uh, comments. Here's one from this fellow, Mike Grindle, who I was just reading his own essay. Mike's comment, a fascinating and informative piece. Unfortunately, I fear we are far too headstrong a species to foresee the potential consequences ahead of use. There you go. Uh, there we go. Uh, here is, what does Tom Ellis have to say? An interesting reflection, but I fear that boat has already sailed and our great acceleration will like all other runaway feedback loops, lead quickly to systemic collapse. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, here is Ryan Scott. Infinite growth on a finite planet was never plausible. It was a fever dream delicately frosted with a gaslighting ganache. Now the hubris of some apes has left us teetering on an ominous precipice. Some days I cannot believe that we have actually reduced many projections from decades to years. And finally, this fellow, uh, Sam Mitchell from Collapse Chronicles. <clears throat> Take it away, Sam Mitchell. Every time you read the words, we need, fill in the blank of what we need to do, to save the planet, what we need to do is automatically add the words ain't gonna happen to the end of the sentence. This excellent essay is a perfect example of that. Peter Borg spends pages explaining why what we need to do is never gonna happen. What we need to do is keep our peckers in our pants and not let our knickers down. But as we all know, that sure as shit ain't ever going to happen. Anyway, it's nice to have a new intelligent voice here in the Doomosphere, despite that little bit of ain't ever gonna happen apocalyptic optimism s sneaking into the end. So let's give uh, Peter Borg a big welcome here into the Doomosphere, and I 
look forward to more from him. But right now, I have to go uh, find some Pepto-Bismol for my sick little dog. Get out there and enjoy the uh, great acceleration before you get sick as a dog. My guys. I don't know. How about this flower box still? So this is what it... Uh, <laughs> this is... Uh, It's looking like it bugs in a jar farm in mid-September. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, get out there and plant some flowers for your own grave while you still can. Bye, guys.